Today I'm here to talk about the next uh, Tarantino movie. Um, uh, going from my least favorite to most. And um, the next one is Hateful Eight. Um, I saw this movie when it came out in 2015. Um, great movie. Um, didn't get to see the Roadshow uh, version. I actually haven't even seen the one on Netflix, which is um, basically four hours long because it was broken up into like four episodes for Netflix as an exclusive thing. I don't know why I haven't. I've been curious about that over the years since it's happened, but yet I have just never bothered at any point. Um, I guess because I just have the movie, and so it's at the ready, I guess, and uh, I could just put it in and yeah, as opposed to having to go through to get the app and then go into my account and do all that. Um, but yeah, this film stars uh, Samuel L. Jackson, which is the first time he's ever been uh, headlining a Tarantino movie. It's the first time he gets his name, or, or top billing, I should say. Or maybe same thing, I guess, as Kurt Russell. Second time he has worked with Kurt Russell. Um, first, of course, was Death Proof. And uh, Jennifer Jason Lee, who got nominated for an Academy Award for Best uh, Supporting Actress. Walter Goggins. Damien Bashar. Tim Roth, who is, um, this is his um, fourth time collaborating with him after Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction. Four Rooms, which I won't talk about because, you know, that's not a completely a Tarantino movie. That's an anthology film. And he wrote and directed the final part of that. So, not a complete Tarantino movie, but one day I'm sure I will uh, talk about that. Um, Michael Madsen, and this is uh, his third time working with uh, Tarantino after Reservoir Dogs and Kill Bill. Um, again, Kill Bill obviously is one movie. Um, and uh, the second time working with Bruce Dern. Uh, first was, of course, uh, Django Unchained. Um, and also it's the second time he's worked with Walter Goggins, whom he worked with on Django Unchained also. <clears throat> um, I really enjoyed this movie. Um, I know many people think this isn't as great as some of his other stuff. Um, I think it's really good. Um, it's also really the first film that has ever, that has a complete original score. I mean, there are some songs here and there, um, but it's not like his other movies where the entire soundtrack is songs or musical cues from other movies inserted here and there. Um, this is a truly uh, a very interesting movie. You know, uh, the thing is a big inspiration for it. Um, it's also a bit of a mist. Obviously, you know, it's a mystery. Um, also, apparently, uh, Tarantino's own Reservoir Dogs was an inspiration. With um, you know, because you know, you know, some people may not be who they say they are, and as the film. Uh, develops you uh, you get to know who is able to be trusted and who isn't um, uh, Jennifer Jason Lee uh, is being taken by Kurt Russell's about hunter to be hung you know he's somebody who uh, when he catches somebody he doesn't just shoot them like Samuel L. Jackson who's a bounty hunter who uh, none of his bounties ever make it to the gallows and the hangman and all that he always kills them that's just how he does it, uh, and um, and now there's a blizzard, and now and then uh, come across Walter Goggins' character, you know Chris Mannix and Marquas, Major Marquis uh, Warren, Samuel Jackson, and John Ruth uh, is a 
Kurt Russell, Daisy Dominic, who is Jason, Jennifer Jason Lee. Um, you know, Chris Mannix is the, you know, the Ultra Goggins. Damien Burchard is um, Bob. Tim Roth is... Oswaldo Marbury, um, Michael Madsen's Joe Gage, and uh, um, uh, Bruce Dern is Confederate General Sanford Smithers. Um, uh, band of characters who, you know, you wouldn't think would ever interact or meet, and yet, through a, what at first seems like uh, people were just on the way to this town of Red Rock where uh, Chris Mannix is to be the sheriff and uh, for one reason or another they're all, they all have different reasons you know Oswaldo Mulberry is apparently the uh, hangman uh, though Bob is uh, uh, has been working at this uh, haberdashery Minnie's haberdashery for some time and um, or he's sort of a uh, has his suspicions about Bob as to how he's, you know, working there, um, and as it's just peculiar to him, and, I mean, I don't want to really reveal on the off chance people have not seen this, um, this doesn't seem to be a film that, again, people really love amongst Tarantino film, uh, fans, it's often ranked low, and it is, I guess, for me, fairly low, but, um, you know, I realize as time goes on, like when the, when I watch these movies um, and rewatch them, some of my list sort of changes. So, you know, this was at one point fairly higher on uh, my list of Tarantino films. Now, of course, now there's nine films. So, taking into account uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and then ranking of all of those, I'm like, you know, I'm rearranging some stuff. And some I ranked higher, I might put a little lower. And some I ranked a little lower at one point, I ranked a little higher, so on and so forth. But this is um, still an excellent film. The acting is incredible. Um, uh, it's pretty cool to see uh, Samuel L. Jackson as the like, lead of the film. Though I guess you could say he was the co-lead of Jackie Brown. Um, but still, you know, Pam Greer was obviously the lead of that film, so... Uh, got to take into account that. Um, but, still, uh, he is uh, definitely the lead of this film. Um, he's got this Lincoln letter. That is mentioned here and there, and apparently in an original draft, um, it was only uh, mentioned once. And an interesting thing about this movie, he Tarantino was not going to make this at one point. He was just going to scrap it, just turn it into a book, and that would be that. Um, and the reason is, uh, it got leaked. You know, um, there are so many people who had had a copy of the script at that point. Apparently he said, you know, for a fact, it didn't come from Tim Roth's party. So, you know, it, him, his manager, whoever, yeah, they didn't leak it. It was somebody else who did. And, um, uh, which might have been an, uh, an incentive as to when he did Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, he then, you know, goes and uh, has everybody go to his place to read the script and they don't get to take it home and read through it over and over after like I guess a, a, a first reading um, so he I guess that, that was an effect of this film getting leaked which I can't completely blame him I mean if a somebody uh, accidentally be a, an actor or their agent or somebody accidentally leaks it somewhere or leaves it somewhere that it then is picked up by somebody who then uh, 
leaks it to the public for all to read. Um, which the end of this movie had to be changed. Um, and they did this reading, live reading, because he said he, he sort of made a decision he wasn't going to make this film, but he wanted to sort of us get it out there, and they did some live reading of it, and so they did that. And it was from there that he thought he had to make the movie. And so he did. And um, the characters that... Uh, Kurt Russell, Tim Roth, and Michael Madsen, and uh, I believe uh, Bruce Dern played, they were all written for them. Though, apparently, it was rumored Christoph Waltz was going to play Oswaldo Marbury. Um, which, having, if you watched uh, Django Unchained as in, in Glorious Bastards, and then you watch this film, Tim Roth's character in many ways does sort of feel like a Crystal Vault's character. Um, and I could see him uh, as, you know, as playing that part, but I'm glad Tim Roth uh, played the part, because I, I think Tim Roth's an incredible actor. He's just fantastic. Um, and um, I hope to see uh, him worked with Tarantino again on the next film. Um, same with Samuel L. Jackson. Um, perhaps Michael Madsen and some others. I don't know. It's just, this movie was really incredible. Fantastic movie. Um, um, interesting story. Um, the fact that certain characters who you wouldn't think would ever be sort of an alliance together or have some sort of alliance uh, they have one by the time the film uh, uh, has reached its conclusion. And that series of events, that's just truly incredible, just the how things sort of worked. And you also see the things that happened before that we saw, at least in the film. And um, it's just, just a very fantastic film. On the off chance you haven't seen it, I, again, I don't want to just up and spoil it. Um, the, the, well, I guess I could say a spoiler alert. Um, so, yes, there you go, spoiler alert. Um, basically, everyone's dead by the end of the film. Um, um, Tarantino, um, no, I haven't read the script that got leaked, so I don't know the actual original ending. But, um, I'm just wondering if perhaps one or two of characters, if they were actually lived by the end of the film. Um, but because of the leak, the ending had to be changed. Um, curious also if other changes were done, too. Um, uh, he has said he thinking about making this into a book at some point. You know, he did that to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It'd be really cool if he did that to this film, and all of his films also. Um, I would definitely uh, get those just to see, like, uh, certain stuff uh, expanded upon, or whatever. Maybe he had, like, the original ending. Maybe that could be included in the book. That would be really cool since we didn't get to see it on screen because of the leak. Um, but yeah, Daniel Marconi, um, he did the score, and the score is excellent. He won his only Academy Award for this film, and um, it's very well deserved. Um, some people say he should have won for Once Upon a Time in America, which I think that's a very good uh, uh, statement to make. Um, but unfortunately with that film, um, I might have talked about that before or maybe briefly mentioned it. Not that I could talk about it at some point, but, you know, that movie, you know, kind of got screwed over by the studio system in terms of how it was cut together to, to shorten the length and rearranged and stuff. It's just, 
unfortunately that movie didn't really get any love and rewards, but... Yeah, um, this is a very good film. Um, you know, it may not be Tarantino's best film, but I think it's one that is, uh, it definitely gets better uh, each time I watch it. Um, it's one I'm, uh, I'm happy I got to see it on the big screen, and I hope to one day watch the Netflix version. Um, I don't know if that will ever be, actually be any better. I've heard some say it's completely awkward because of, it was never intended to be like a mini series or anything. So, like, the, apparently, the when it ends, that episode ends, it's just abrupt and sort of awkward. So, I don't know what I'll think about that, but I do know the film version, the version that I think Tarantino really intended everybody to see it as. Um, it's really good. Um, it's just fantastic, and I'm real happy to have been able to. See it on the big screen and also be able to rewatch it anytime I want. Um, yeah. So, with that, I hope uh, all of you will have a great day. I hope uh, your week's been good and you'll continue to have a great rest of your week and an excellent weekend. And I'll see you all next time.